the traditional path of school to climbing the corporate ladder can not only be high risk for your career, it could almost feel like a death trap. My father used to tell me so many times when I was growing up, he'd say, Steve, get your degree, go to work for a large corporation. You work hard, they'll take care of you, and you will have a great career. Of course, your mother and I would much prefer that you become a doctor or a lawyer, but short of that, getting a job at a large corporation will do. So that was the path I took. And about a year and a half in, I open up my bank statement, and once again, I'm down to $50 in my bank account. I'm 22 years old, and I work in a cubicle on the fourth floor of a nondescript office building in Schaumburg, Illinois. I'm staring at my bank statement and this pile of claims that I'm supposed to process that day, wondering how on earth will I ever get ahead? I work long days and the student loans seem to take a hold of my paychecks before they ever get a chance to hit my bank account. Have you ever thought this could be your situation? Maybe you're in this situation right now. Have you ever wondered how you'll reach the success that you imagine for yourself? Well, I definitely did that day. That day I realized the safe path to professional success might actually be the highest risk. That day I dared to question my plan and ask, what if I could earn a great living and love the work I do? Well, that seems to be a question that so many of us are asking ourselves these days. But of course, that was my situation that was a long time ago. Surely the world has changed. After all, this is the era of Facebook, Uber, and Google, and there's so many cool hot startups out there. Surely this must be the career path that college graduates or people who feel stuck in their corporate jobs are taking. Turns out, this isn't the case. In spite of startups being desperate for hiring, nearly 14% of college graduates who graduate with a bachelor degree within their first year are unemployed and nearly 43% are underemployed. And according to Josiah Sternfeld, adjunct professor at the University of Texas Macomb School of Business, when he asks his students where they plan to work once they graduate, the overwhelming majority say a large corporation. And if you Google the phrase, people who feel stuck in their corporate jobs, you'll get nearly 300 million results. I mean, that's a lot of content. There must be a lot of people who feel this way. So what's happening here? Why are so many people thinking about joining or lingering on at a large corporation rather than joining a startup? Well, to answer this question, we need to take a step back to define what a startup actually is. According to the United States Small Business Administration, a startup is a company that has been in business for under a year and is in the formative stages. But that actually paints a poor picture for what defines a startup. Doug Irwin, chairman of a venture capital company and serial technology entrepreneur, offers a far more instructive definition. He says a company is a startup if it operates like it's the last frontier for outlaws, a place where nonconformists can live, create, and sell their ideas. I mean, how cool. Who doesn't want to be involved in that? It's a place where you get to be the rough riding rebel running circles around the slow moving bureaucratic large corporations. And what if you have your heart set in getting in the C-suite in the Fortune 500? I've got two words for you, good luck. Obviously there can only be 500 CEO positions and maybe 5,000 in the C-suite all told. And many of these people stay in their jobs for years. That means your odds of getting in the C-suite in the Fortune 500 are about the same as your odds of being drafted into the National Football League where 254 players are selected in each year's NFL draft. Compare this to the over 46,000 startups around the United States and nearly 3,000 venture-backed startups in Ohio, and you can obviously see there are far more executive leadership opportunities. But it's true, startups come with a side of risk. 
Not all startups make it. I remember when I joined my first startup, a company in Ann Arbor, Michigan, and on that first day, I looked in the office next to mine, and there were people unplugging the copy machine, putting it on a dolly, and literally rolling it right out of the office. I came to find out a few days later it was because the company could no longer afford to pay for that copy machine. But I was blind to it. I was so pumped and excited to work with a small team of crazies, hell-bent on changing the world, changing the way applications were being developed. I took the opportunity to learn everything I could. And then, just a few years later, that company that couldn't afford to pay for that copy machine, it went public. And I got the bug and never left the startup world. Since that time, I've worked with six other startup companies, all of whom have successfully sold or gone public, generating over $3 billion in shareholder value. I work with hundreds of amazingly smart and talented startup entrepreneurs, all the while raising my family with my wonderful wife of over 30 years. Now, I don't believe I'm special. I have no superpower. And I say these things not to impress you, but rather to impress upon you that if it can happen to me, it can happen to you. But can it? Can this story really be your story? I'll tell you if it's not your story, it'll certainly be the story of a colleague or a roommate or a friend of a friend. And that's because the marketplace is demanding it. You see, job growth is being fueled by small emerging businesses. The smart money, it's betting on startups and startup entrepreneurs. In fact, in the last two and a half years, over 44,000 startups have received $282 billion to fund their growth nearly 40% of which have gone to companies in and around the technology space. And since 1995, 65% of all new jobs have been created by small and mid-sized businesses. And according to a recent survey of startup CEOs, the number one issue keeping them up at night, it's hiring good people. Now think of that. Hiring good people was rated ahead of growing revenue, acquiring customers, or gaining access to more capital. So how do you make this story your story? Well, let me share with you just three things you could use right away to carve your path. There certainly are more, but just these three will get you started. Number one, view yourself as a startup company, the startup of you. Ask yourself, why would someone invest in you? How would you respond to that? What's your elevator pitch? So many of us have memorized the elevator pitches for the companies we work for, but we have no elevator pitch for ourselves. And startup executives who are hiring, they want to know why you, and they want to know it in the first 60 seconds. Number two, when you choose to go to work for a startup, approach that decision as an investor. What criteria would you use to select a startup? Can you separate a startup with a good story versus a startup that has both a good story as well as a good chance for success? For example, do your diligence. Does the company's products have some unique dimension that's valued by its target buyers? And number three, create your own personal blueprint to guide your career success. So many of us have created plans for which we're so proud. Those plans have goals, strategies, tactics, key milestones. We hold ourselves and others accountable. We might even identify ways to reduce risk. But have you documented a plan for your career? And that plan should contain all the conventional elements like the key milestones and the goals that should be achieved, but also some unconventional, for example, have you defined the type of people you want to surround yourself with at work? Jack Welch, the former CEO at General Electric, I think he had it right when he said, nothing matters more to winning than surrounding yourself with A-plus talent. Well, what's the type of A-plus talent that you need around you to bring out the best that you have to offer? And you typically won't hear this from a technology startup executive, but to be at your best, you're going to have to live at your best. And never forget, take care of what matters most, and that's yourself and your family. 
Build time for your family into your career blueprint. Learn how to defend your calendar such that you can orchestrate a healthy work-life balance. So what would be possible if you could earn a great living doing what you love? What if you could wake up excited, ready to take on the challenge of the day ahead and positively impact the world? What would be possible for you? I remember when I joined a cybersecurity startup that had potential. And when I joined, the CEO organized a meeting with the company's leadership where I learned about the big challenges facing the company, challenges my new team and I would be responsible for solving. Now, some may have viewed these challenges as insurmountable. After all, we were taking on bigger, better funded competitors that had all of the advantages. Successfully solving for those challenges would ultimately determine the fate of the company. So my new team and I went to work. I'll never forget how hard they worked, the amazing creativity and enthusiasm they brought to the table every day. We delivered a new marketing plan that changed the game and put these bigger, better funded competitors into positions they couldn't defend. We launched that plan at lightning speed and we did it well. And that plan put the company on a much more successful course. The entire organization was aligned and was convinced the market was ours for the taking. It was an incredible five-year ride. We had so much fun, not one single day felt like work. And now, many years after the company has successfully exited, so many of us descend on Houston, Texas, where we go to annual reunion parties. And all we could do is reminisce how awesome it was to be part of something so special. We learned so much. We created bonds that will have the rest of our lives. You have much of what you need in order to achieve the success you want. Let me say that again. You have much of what you need in order to achieve the success you want. If you take away one thing from me today, I hope it's this. Today's startups have big ideas and they're well-funded and they are desperate to hire smart, motivated, hardworking people willing to share their talents in innovative workspaces that are buzzing with energy and opportunity. And they're hiring for all kinds of people. They're hiring artsy people, techie people, young, old, experienced, green, those who will work in the office or remote. So if you wanna earn a great living doing what you love for the right startup, you could be a godsend. Thank you.